What's up everyone, hope you are doing fantastic, I am back with a new DaVinci Resolve color grading tutorial. As you guys really liked the previous tutorial which I posted a few days ago on my YouTube channel for the cinematic music video which I got and the impressions were just so good, I thank you so much for the love and the support which you give to me and I decided to make another color grading tutorial for the latest cinematic portrait video which I posted on my channel a few days ago, Maddie, which had a really filmic vibe to it and I used the Dehancer plugin for this color grading. This plugin is just amazing. I love it so much when you want to achieve that filmic look. It gives you so much difference in your color grading and I think it's an amazing investment which you can do for your color grading and DaVinci Resolve. If you want to get it you can use my code Mehran HD to get 10% out of your first plugin purchase. And let's go and start the color grading process and I will show you how amazing this plugin is and how different this Dehancer plugin can make your color grading process. So we have the S-Log3 footage here which was shot with Sony a7 IV in 4K 10 bits 30 frames per second but I have already confirmed this video to 23 frames per second here because we get 20% of slow motion this way. Now let's go and create a new timeline. I will turn off this use project settings and I will go to color tab and I want to set my timeline color space to DaVinci white gamut so we get the most out of the dynamic range of the video and we work in a DaVinci white gamut while doing the color grading process. Now we go to the color tab. This time I want to create six nodes. Let me do this by pressing Pressing the Alt S and I will create six nodes. I will name the nodes. The first one CST color space transfer. The fifth one also CST. The second one I want to create the exposure and white balance. Here we got the vignette. The other one also sharpen. And the last node dehancer. So for the first node I will use the color space transform and again for the other CST at the end, I will use the color space transform once again. And now we go to the first node and I use the input color space as S gamut 3 because it was shot in S log 3, which has the S gamut 3 color space in the Sony A7 IV. For the input gamma, we are going to use the S log 3 as you see here. And for the output color space, we are going to select the DaVinci white gamut. And for the output gamma again, we are gonna use the DaVinci intermediate. And now for the last CST note, we use the input color space as DaVinci white gamut because we are getting the DaVinci white gamut here. And at the end, we're gonna convert it again to Rec 709. So again, I use my input color space and gamma as DaVinci intermediate. And the output color space and gamma, we are going to use the Rec 709 because we are exporting for the social media which has the Rec 709 gamma and color space and as you see we have properly converted our S log tree footage here. Now we are gonna go for the exposure and white balance. Before starting to explain the exposure and white balance I want to give you a short explanation. This video was shot around the blue hour so as you see it has a little bit of cold tones here so I want to adjust it and make it a little bit warmer so we get to a neutral point because at the end I want this video to be warm and moody and gives a dreamy warm look to the viewer eyes so the first thing I'm going to do here is to add a little bit of exposure because it is a little bit underexposed for the look I'm going to create so in the HDR note I will increase the exposure a little bit not so much around 0.1 it's good I think and now I'm going to set my temperature and tint because this was shot around the blue hour I want to make it much more warmer so we get warmer tone as you see the skin tone becomes much more pleasing in this way and I think around here is a good point to get to that neutral point and again I want to decrease the tint a little bit in order to remove that magenta tone from the skin and we get a better tint here and as you see it is much more better right now. Now it's enough for the exposure and white balance the only remaining thing which I need to do here 
here is to go to the mid-tone detail and decrease the mid-tone detail so we get a softer skin tone on the model's face around minus 35 I think it's good the skin is now more creamy and it looks much more better now I go to the vignette node and I want to the window here and add vignette to the around of the frame which gives so much mood and as you see here I make it softer here so we get the softness around the corner and I want to invert it now we go to the curves and I want to decrease the brightness and as you see we get a much more moody picture and it looks much better now we go to the sharpen node and we go to the blur and we select the second tab sharpen and we decrease the radius to 0.47 and now the picture is much more sharper if you look at the eye and if I do a before and after of this node you see that it is much more sharper on the eyes and can also go further to 0.46 now it's much more sharp and I love the sharpness which it gives to the picture now we go to the most important step which is the dehancer plugin and I will select my dehancer as you see here I search for a dehancer now we are going to create that moody filmic look which I was talking about so let's start and for the input as you see I'm selecting the Rec 709 because as you saw here the color space transfer the output was Rec 709 so we have Rec 709 from here now we select the Rec 709 and we go down here for the film print I am going to select the Kodak Pro Image 100 looks really good on this one I love the look it gives it is so much film and antique now we go to the film developer here I want to give it a little bit of contrast boost first make sure you enable it and let's add a little bit of contrast boost as you see here around 10 I think it's good also I want to add a little bit of color boost not so much because we do not want so much color when we are going for that filmic look for the filmic looks you need more tones than colors I had previously mentioned this in my previous tutorials now for film compression I do not need it this is when you have really harsh highlights and you want to achieve that filmic look it's a very good option but we do not need it here now for the expand I'm going to increase my black point as you see when I increase it the black points become much more punchy and contrasty I think around three might be good we have a good contrast in the black now for the white point I want to increase the brightness and uh, add a little bit of the punch to the highlights and as you see when I decrease the white point we are bringing up the picture and I think around 70 might be good and I love it we have a good brightness the brightest part as you see is around 64 IRE and I think for a filmic look a moody picture the highest number for portrait video around 64 is good and I do not want to go anymore higher because we want a filmic look here now for the film print I'm just going to add a little bit of tonal contrast not so much around maybe 0.4 as you see it adds a beautiful contrast to the mid-tones and it is really nice I love it how contrast it gets around the mid-tones now here is the most important part I think in uh, the answer is such a really amazing option the color head it's like the tones which you add here in primaries and color bars but I have a much more better control here it's really good I love this option now as you see here if I decrease and increase this we are adding sorry first you need to enable it don't forget that then you can see the difference when I decrease this I am adding yellow and I when I increase it I'm adding blue I want to make this picture warmer so I'm going to decrease it and add yellow I'm going down and I want some much more yellow in this and as you see it's turning greenish so for the next step we are going to remove some some green from it and move this slider towards magenta and I am going to add magenta as you see here we are removing the greens now it's much better now you are seeing red what uh, we do next is going to change the slider of cyan and red and we are going to add cyan in order to remove the reds and I'm going to decrease this slider to around here now I think it's much more beautiful and as you see the picture has become much more antique warm and moody I love the feelings now we have other options here as you see we have shadow tone mid-tone tones and highlights tone if I increase and decrease this you see that in 
in the shadows we add blue and if I increase it in the shadows we add yellows now I want to just a little bit decrease the yellows in the shadows not so much so we get a neutral tone also here in the shadows and for the mid tones I'm going to let's play it and yes as you see if I increase it we get a beautiful tonality here in the skin we get a beautiful tone and the picture becomes much more uniform as you see here so I'm going to add yellow to the mid tones if I increase this as you see it adds warm tones to the mid tones I'm going to increase it to around mm, 20 it's good 19 and for the highlights I'm going to it doesn't make so much difference as you see because we do not have high points here around the 70 or 80 IRE so the highlights doesn't make so much difference so I'm not going to touch it and I will reset it now for the next uh, step or the film grain I'm going to use this uh, 35 millimeter ISO 250 the default option is very beautiful we have nice film grain it is really natural this is the power of dehancer it adds a natural film grain to your videos and it looks really beautiful you can also increase it if you like I'm not going to use the halation and for the bloom I'm going to enable the bloom option and as you see it adds a little bit of bloom around the highlights it's not much present here because we do not have really harsh highlights but it's good to have it because we have other sequences which may have because we have other sequences which may use it now we go to the film damage option I want to enable it and as you see it adds a film damage to the video and we have film damage which makes it really nice and if you do not see it we can change the options and the amounts as you see here now you see the film damage effect it's really nice it gives a really classic and antique vibe to the video and I really love this option I hope you can see it on YouTube if I zoom on the video you see the film damage option option it is really nice option which the dehancer offers you now for the last option which I'm going to do is to add vignette if I enable it you see it adds a beautiful vignette again to the picture I really love the vignette effect guys wherever I see it I enable it and add vignette to the picture because it gives so much mood and here I want to enable and disable the dehancer note to show you how much difference it makes and how much moodier it makes your picture and it gives the picture so so much filmic vibe you see here it's just amazing and now let's do a full before and after as you see we have come so far from s log 3 footage to a antique and classic and filmic vibe which is really nice i really love the warm look and i hope that you also enjoyed this look which we created and here again once again you can see the before and after thank you so much for watching this tutorial guys if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comment sections and do not forget that you can get this plugin with 10 percent off by using my code mehran hd i will see you in my future videos goodbye